Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Jeff, and today I'm speaking with Jonathan from Weaveworks. Welcome. Hi. Oh, thanks, Jeff. Tell Hi. me what Weaveworks does. Weaveworks is um, operations as a service. So our users will have their own clusters, for example, a Kubernetes cluster, and they'll install our agents on their cluster to get access to a, a really nice uh, management platform. OK, let's follow it through and see how it works. OK, so this is we're going to be focusing on the monitoring aspect where users send us time series data, and we store that for ages and let them query it. So the um, users cluster writes data to uh, our service, which is hosted on AWS. We want to, there are two things we want to do with this data. We want to make sure that it's uh, that we're storing in a highly available way and that we're, we're multi-tenant. Um, this means we can't just use vanilla Prometheus. We need to store it in some other way. DynamoDB is a great fit for this, but we can't actually take all of the writes that we're getting all of the time and write them to DynamoDB. It would be too expensive and too slow. So we need a um, write deamplification system to, to make it all cost effective. All right, and that's really what we have in the rest of our picture? That's what this picture is, yeah. So the incoming data from the user gets uh, routed, by, uh, routed to one of our distributors. We have a bunch of them. And this distributor then needs to figure out which uh, ingesters to write them to. So the way it does that is it goes and looks at a consistent hash ring in console. So let's draw that there. Uh, this consistent hash ring tells the distributor which ingesters, plural, to write the data to. Uh, so then once it's got that, it writes the data to three ingesters. And why do you choose three? Um, yeah, that's a good number. Um, we want to have room for one of them to go down for no reason and one of them to be replaced for, for upgrades. So it's, a, it's an N plus two okay. kind of thing. Tell me a bit more about how console and the consistent hash ring fit together. Sure. So um, ingesters can c we can we scale up the number of ingesters fairly often, or scale them down. And when this happens, we need to uh, the ingester needs to claim something on the hash ring. Uh, we need to have a consistent view of that hash ring so that the distributors route things correctly and we can read things correctly. Uh, we need something that's consistent now, not eventually. So we've got the the data effectively accumulating in the ingester, and at a certain point, the decision is made. Off it goes to DynamoDB. Yep, that's right. So after after enough information is accumulated. Um, we will write, write it to DynamoDB and then write about mm, nine or ten indices to make sure uh, to allow for faster querying. So, in a sense, all this deamplification, you're amortizing the cost of saving up this data and indexing over a larger piece of data? Yeah, exactly. That's a good that. way to think about it? Yep, that's a yeah, good way of thinking about it. What happens next after that? Right, so also at the same, well actually at the same time, it's writing this stuff to Memcache, uh, which is just there to, again, to optimize queries to make them a little bit faster. Uh, and then, then I guess we should talk about. Uh, what happens with queries? So all of this is being done all of the time. Okay, by, by this is this is the continuous process. This is the the right cycle. Yeah. So this is this is just happening by a machine. When a human being wants to actually find out, well, you know, what is my cluster running slowly or fast, then they'll need to do a query. This query comes in through ELB to the querier, and the querier is almost exactly the same thing as the ingester, except it's it, it does reads and not writes, uh, and it's provisioned with a um, more CPU so it can do do faster. Queries. Um, the ingester, the query also consults console to find the ingesters. It queries the ingesters and memcache to do a query. Does that mean that the effectively that the the view that you get from querying is consistent regardless of whether it's still in the ingester or it's passed on to DynamoDB? Uh, yes, that's right. So the query actually also will consult DynamoDB if it can't find the information in the ingester. So this will be particularly for queries in the, in the distant past rather than uh, yeah, recent queries will just touch the ingesters and okay. touch. Jonathan, this has been really interesting. Really appreciate your sharing it with us. No, thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for watching. This is my architecture.